Hi there, this is Max with AppRe.io. Today I want to give you an overview of the AppRe.io dashboard. And that's what you see right now. And basically you will see this dashboard once you sign in. Now if you're new to AppRe.io, uh, there is another great video that I highly recommend and that's the platform overview. And uh, I have it right here. And so I basically go over this diagram that shows you the platform features and benefits. And I will definitely add a link to this video in the video uh, that I'm doing right now. Uh, so you can again view both of them. All right. But uh, let's go back and let's start here. So again, uh, this will be a, a dashboard uh, overview. Basically, we'll just cover all these, all the main components of the platform. And then we'll dive into some of the details for each component for each uh, main feature. All right. Now, so when you when you sign into the platform, you're going to be on the apps page. Again, I already have some apps, but you're not going to have any apps. And uh, so this is the list of apps. Uh, now, an app um, in AppRe.io, uh, it's the client, right? It's what gets published to an app store and then what gets installed on a device. All right, so that's that's the app uh, part uh, on the on the platform. Now, every app, as you can see, has more settings here. Um, for example, you can create versions, uh, creates a version of an app. You can do hosting, for example, HTML5 uh, hosting and some other uh, capabilities here, right? Also on the apps page, there is a plugin section and then a plugin is a reusable component or a template. Now, how do you create a plugin is that you first create an app. So a plugin is always created from an app. And so once you have an app or some uh, basic functionality that you would like to make into a template, you take an app and you export the app or parts of the app as a plugin, right? And that basically becomes a reusable component uh, or a template, right? So that's, that's what a plugin is for. Um, what else here? So also on the apps page, there is also push notifications, right? So again, you can send push notifications uh, to you to your users, and you can send uh, also targeted push notifications, right? So you can you know find you know uh, or filter uh, uh, by users and only send a message to a particular group, right? Also on this page, I'm going to jump to permissions, and that's actually available on. Uh, every component and this is to help you work in the team. So if you have two or more people, you can share resources, you can assign roles and set permissions. So for example, you can say that this team member has this access to this app uh, and so on. So that's the permissions page. And again, it's available on the other pages uh, as well. Now, if I go back um, to the apps here, now to open an app, you can just click open. And then what's going to happen is that it's going to load the visual app builder. And that's the place where you build the app. So again, you build the pages, you build the navigation, the app logic, uh, customize as much as you want and so on. And of course, you also connect uh, the app to the app backend. All right. Now, once you're done, um, at the very end, you would go to export. And this is where you would build the binary file. Right. So you get the binary file is downloaded to your computer. And then you publish it to an app store, Google Play or the Apple App Store. Uh, just a standard process like everyone else. And that's how you publish the app. All right. So let's go and close here. All right. So this is for the app. And again, um, this, is the, uh, this is the client uh, part of your application. right? So this is not the entire app, but this is the, the client, the UI. Portion. Obviously, uh, one of the most important parts of your application. Now, there is also a database, and it's a cloud database, right? So it's not a local database, it's a cloud that's running on the AppRea platform. And that's for storing anything you want. Users, orders, customers, entirely up to you. Right? And so let's open uh, a database. Now, a database has a number of predefined collections and users. This is for managing users. Files is for uploading files, managing files, and then devices. This is for push notifications, and in particular, allows you to send targeted push messages. And then here, under collections, you can have one or more custom collections. 
this is how the collection looks. Uh, you can see it right here. And then right here, you have various actions, rename, set security, uh, and so on. Right? Also, as with apps, we can click to versions, and you can create different versions of your database. Right? So then you can also roll back if you need to. Also, as I mentioned, permissions is also available. And then settings, you can do more stuff here. Uh, you can set uh, session expiration time, you can manage your API keys, there's also a master API key, um, and so on. So other settings are available uh, on the settings, uh, settings page, right? Social connections is to enable social login into your app. So for example, if you want to allow uh, login with Facebook, login with Twitter, um, and I think there's another one, I'm forgetting which one, uh, I think Google, um, so you would set it up here. All right, so that's for the database. Again, it's a cloud database. It's available as part of the platform for storing anything your app uh, requires. All right, let's jump to server code. And server code is a very, very, um, very nice uh, component um, um, on the platform is that it's a JavaScript environment um, or it's a JavaScript server-side environment where you can write custom code using JavaScript and it's executed on the server, all right? Uh, and you can basically write any logic that you want uh, using JavaScript. And so you can see there, I have scripts here. Uh, you can also create libraries, and these are just, just like your plain idea of a library. It's a reusable component, so a library can be used in uh, a number of, of scripts, all right? And so if I open uh, this script, for example, so you can see, uh, you're just just writing code here. This is just JavaScript code uh, and The uh, server code script has a uh, As API's so for example, you can access the database uh, You can send push notifications, right? Um, so it's very nicely integrated with the platform, you know another example, you know, you can query the database check for some for, for quantity of you know items and then if the quantity is low you can for example uh, send uh, an SMS right so uh, using Twilio API notify someone that you know the inventory is low or you can send an email right using Sangrid API right that's all uh, easily done because again with server code script you can easily invoke and connect to other third-party uh, APIs, right? So there are also some snippets, and these are you know short code uh, snippets that you can automatically insert uh, into the script. So for example, if I do something like this, you can see this code is automatically inserted, uh, which is very nice. All right, you can also test the script right here, how it works, um, and then this is also you can set script parameters. Now, in addition to being a very powerful environment where you can write you know custom app logic. Every script is also automatically becomes uh, basically a, a RESTful endpoint. And you can see the URL uh, right here, All right? So uh, it's very nice. Now, the same thing for the database, I think I didn't mention, but every database, the database uh, that you create is automatically exposed uh, as a REST API. And actually, I'm gonna jump to the apps at the end. I'm gonna show you how you import those services, All right? And again, you can see there, um, also settings here, uh, trace, this is for debugging, so you can see any error messages. Uh, dependencies, this is where you set uh, if a script depends on a library. Again, versions, uh, you again, same thing with apps and databases. Uh, permissions, same thing. And then there are also settings where you can set more stuff, all right? Another nice thing is that uh, jobs, uh, this allows you to actually schedule a script to run periodically. So for example, going back to the example where you query a database and check for inventory, so you can schedule a script to run, for example, uh, once a day, right? <clears throat> and it will be, again, it will run automatically once a day, which is, again, very nice. And then send the notifications exactly the same way, all right? Um, so that's for a server code. Now, API Express, um, is another server-side component, and uh, it primarily uh, allows you to integrate 
with external data sources, right? And let's open, you can see I have uh, some projects here. Let's see if we can open this one. All right, and so there are two ways to, to work with uh, API Express. So one, you can, you can automatically uh, connect to a relational database and expose the database via REST APIs. And that's what you see right here. So basically, I'm connecting to a relational database and then automatically uh, exposing uh, these endpoints, right? Um, now, if you want to build a custom service, that's possible, and I can create a new one. We call this custom, custom one. And so what you're going to see in a second is that uh, it's a visual service builder, right? Where you can actually build um, a very sophisticated custom service. So for example, this is the service input and this is the output. And then I can use a SQL component, which allows me to write a custom SQL query. Um, Maybe I also want to invoke a REST service, right? I can connect to an external REST service if I would like to, right? And I can do a lot more stuff. I mean, there is a SOAP component. Um, I can even do a fork maybe if I would like, right? So I can kind of execute things uh, at the same time, all right? Um, but again, what's nice is that for the outside world, right? This basically looks like a simple REST API. But as you can see, uh, you can create pretty sophisticated service logic here. All right, let's close. All right, it's, it's, it wants me to, to, it doesn't like the empty field, so uh, we can just delete it. All right, go back. All right, so again, you can create, you can automatically generate APIs uh, for a relational database, or you can create a custom uh, REST API as using the Visual Service Builder, all right? And um, all your APIs will be listed right here. Uh, just quickly to go back, again, for a relational database, you can create one or more database connection, all right? That basically uh, looks like this, all right? So that's for API Express. And now uh, let's quickly go to Resources. Now, Resources, um, that's where you keep your certificates for when you publish uh, the app and build a binary file for, again, iOS and Android, that's for the certificates. This is where you configure webhooks, Cordova plugins. This is where you can add uh, custom Cordova plugins if you would like, okay? And then again, quickly, security here. This primarily works with API Express. Uh, so you can create uh, security providers uh, which is which are used with API Express. Now, last thing here uh, is the account page, and you know this is where you set your plan, your profile. You can purchase uh, you know paid support options, uh, what we call packs. So that's all uh, available here, as well. You can set a social sign-in into the platform, um, right? So we can instead of typing your password when you sign it into the platform, you can use social sign-in. Now, as I promised, I want to go back quickly to an app and open and show you how you import the backend services into your app. All right. So once you, you know, once you set up your database, once you set up your server code script uh, or API Express, now it doesn't need to be all three, it can be maybe two of them or maybe one. That's obviously entirely uh, up to you and app requirements. You would go right here. And this is where you, you can import the database service. Let's, let's see here. Right, and you can see all these services and you just uh, you can just click all of them, for example. And you can see all these services are automatically imported. Uh, same thing for uh, server code. So uh, if there is a server code that we want to import, so maybe, let's see here. This is the one that I showed you, import, and then was imported. And then same thing for API Express. All right, so we can do get. All right, so this is how you connect. This is how you connect the, the app with the backend services. 
all right and um, I think uh, that's it one last thing is again you always have access to to help to our blog to our docs and then um, definitely check out this what's new uh, it opens up uh, a panel here and shows you sort of what's new uh, on the platform all right so I hope this was uh, useful um, again definitely check out this video which again I will add a link and um, thank you for watching.